Okay, setting up and using Mortise Master. Um, first thing you'll want to do is install the included guide bushing. It's a standard Porter Cable style guide bushing. It's a one inch and uh, if your router comes with its own guide bushing and it has a one inch guide bushing, you don't have to use this. However, uh, the bushing fits into the slide plate, it can't stand proud on the bottom. So if you have, uh, Bosch comes with a set of bushings, I don't know if they're one inch or not, but if, you, if your router has a one inch guide bushing and you want to use it, um, it can't stand proud on the bottom of the plate because it's going to hit your work or it's going to hit the mortise master. So there's that. Next thing will be when you install the bushing, it's got to be in the center. Now, uh, your router probably came with some sort of a centering tool, or you can buy this as an accessory. Uh, this thing uh, came with this. It's a little steel pin with a quarter inch and a half inch uh, option for uh, putting this into your collet. And of course, they don't give you any instructions with it or anything, but I, I think you install this into your, uh, into your collet and then you bring this, you bring this uh, cone down so it centers the bushing. You loosen up your plate, let it float, bring this down so it's centered, and then tighten the plate up. Uh, myself, I don't think this works that great. It does work, but it doesn't work that great. I went to uh, the local um, tool store, Harbor Freight, and they sell a, a set of these for about 15 bucks, and one of them has a quarter inch diameter on the inside that fits that pin perfectly. So what you can do, loosen up your plate, drop this guy in, run your base down, then tighten up your base, and then it's, it's, it's pretty well centered then for sure, and you know it. Then you can take this one out, Oop. you can take this one out, put the Mortise Master guide bushing in, and you're set to go. So, uh, a little word about my Bosch router. I had to use a, an adapter, I think it's RA1129 is the part number, but it wouldn't actually, when I installed this on the plate, it would actually hit the casting and wouldn't let the plate go over far enough to get the thing on center. I had to actually go in and take my Dremel and grind some of the aluminum away in order to get this thing to be able to float over. So, uh, thanks Bosch. But anyway, you got to troubleshoot that. Once you get that set and it's in center, you're good to go. Uh, you might want to check it every once in a while, but um, for the most part, uh, you're good to go. Now I'm going to show you how to check this without measuring it to see if, you're, if your bit's in the center. But first we're going to set up a piece of work here. And let's say I want to mortise this end, end grain here. One of the ways I do it is uh, didn't used to have a vise, so I'd clamp a scrap board to my table and my workbench, and then I clamp my work uh, like so. Another nice thing about Mortise Master is you can get your work up and you can have it right here where you can see what's going on. It's not down here and away from you. Uh, if you guys decide to buy one of these, I think you're really going to like it. But I'm a woodworker first and foremost, and I love the thing. I'm not just saying it because I invented it. So anyway, you want to have your, your work mounted. You want to have your mortising surface level, relatively, and then it takes a little getting used to because you've got to try to hold this thing on here, you know, and try to get it clamped up. So here's the best way I found to do it. Put it on like so. 
snug up your knobs just to hold it in place. Then you take your wood clamps and you clamp your mortise master. I always use two. Um, some guys I'm sure are only using one clamp, but I, I use two for safety. And you want this to be pretty solid, so uh, you want make sure your work is fairly solid. You set that router on there, you don't want it tilting on you. So once you've got your clamps on, <clears throat> mortise master is secure. Your layout mark is on the uh, center line of the fixed clamp plate. Now you can loosen these knobs and you can move these things anywhere you want. Now, after you do your mortise, uh, as long as you keep these snug after you've got it set up, you can take your clamps off and as long as it, those lips are, are resting on that surface, you don't have to worry about it falling. The original Mortise Masters didn't have that lip and it was even harder to get, get clamped up. Now, let's say we're using Auto Center Mode. Next thing you want to do is determine how wide you want your mortise to be. And the formula is very simple. You take the diameter of your cutter and subtract that from how long you want your mortise to be. Let's say you want a two inch long mortise. That's a long one, but let's say you want a two inch long mortise just for explanation purposes. You got a half inch bit, which is about the largest you can do with this thing. Uh, so you take your cutter diameter away from the two inches, that leaves you an inch and a half, cut that in two, and then you cut your setup blocks for that. You need two setup blocks that are that diameter. So this thickness plus that thickness plus your cutter is going to equal how wide your mortise will be. It's just that simple. My original mortise masters had like little marks on here so you could set this and everything. And what I found was I never used the darn things. It's so much easier using setup blocks. Very repeatable. You can go right back to them. You can mark these things. You can keep them with your tenon stock. And I'm going to show you how to make tenon stock later. And then anytime you want to use that tenon stock, you've got the setup blocks. You go right back to that setup just that fast. And it is very fast, guys. So you're using Mortise Master in auto center mode and uh, you, your mortise is a little bit off center and you think it's off center more than it should be. It could be your bushing is not centered. And one way to tell is put in a scrap piece, hold your uh, router in a certain orientation, plunge down, maybe cut a small mortise. Then turn your router 90 degrees, move to a different spot on your scrap piece, cut another mortise, move it another 90 degrees, move to a fresh spot, cut another mortise. If you do that at different orientations, then on your different test mortises, if this distance is not the same on each one as you turn that router, you'll know that cutter's not in the center. So you'll need to troubleshoot that. Get that straightened out before, before you use Mortise Master, okay? Mortise Master is really just that easy. Once you get your setup blocks in here, uh, your clamps are on, now you can move this whole thing back and forth. And you can center the slide plate diameter on your mark. You're going to say, now wait a minute, Don, there's no hard line to line up. You just got to eyeball that diameter and it's not perfect. Well, it doesn't really have to be perfect. As long as you cut your tenons a little bit short, this way you'll have a little bit of wiggle room when you put those two things together. And it won't really matter because the glue will take up the joint. 
We'll talk about tenons later, but eyeballing this way, I find, is good enough. But here's a little trick. If you take your mortise mark and make a mark a half inch on each side and go all the way across and another half inch here so you've got a one inch from mark to mark and it's in the middle of your center mark or, or your, your mortise location then you can line up the edges of the slide plate diameter the one inch diameter slide plate you can line that up with the two lines that you've made on your workpiece. Now you only have to do that with one because once you get this thing locked down and in the center you're done. You don't ever have to move it again. Now these are in the right relationship with that mark. So when you put your next piece in you don't need those marks because it's already in the right spot. So it's set up. Now when you move this mortise master from, uh, from piece to piece only loosen these knobs. That way you keep your setup over here. Your fixed knobs stay locked down as long as you're using that width of tenon stock. So uh, it's just that easy, guys. But let's talk about the difference of uh, auto center versus working from the face. If I have auto center, let's say I'm building a coffee table. That's a good example. You got a leg and you got a stretcher coming in. You may want auto center. It's just that easy. That's simple. Auto center on this piece, auto center on this piece. Maybe you don't want that. I want to build a coffee table where the stretcher's flush on the front. How do I do that? Well, then you use an offset. In the Mortis, Man, uh, Mortis Master user guide, there's a chart of what guide blocks or uh, what holes to install the guide blocks in to get what dimension from the face over to the center of the mortise. So you pick out which one works best for your situation and that's what you use. So for example, uh, this is the flush setup. So what I do is I use an offset that from the face to the center is half, roughly half. It doesn't have to be dead in the center. It's just got to be close. So if you're using three quarter inch stock, you use the three eighth offset. That'll get you in the center close on this piece. Then you use the same three eighths offset on your leg, and then when they go together, you're flush. If you want a reveal, so you want this stretcher to be inset a bit, but you don't want it in the center, then you'd kind of do the same thing. You would use the 3 eighths on this piece to get you close to the center here, but on this piece, you're going to inset that more to another offset. So you're going to reinstall the guide blocks to maybe the half inch setting. So you're doing 3 eighths on this one and a half inch on the leg that will give you the difference will be your reveal. So that's how easy it is.